If the theme of the week is going to be Prowl, then there is absolutely no other Prowl toy I can end on other than this one. While typically Masterpiece is a little bit hard to do in random review format, the cars do tend to be more to the point Transformers, and I think we'll be fine on this one. So we're going to take a look at the Prowl to end all Prowls, the MP17. Prowl. Yes, this is the Japanese version, though if you're looking into the American one, um, I don't really think there's much, if any, dis uh, difference between them. So buy with confidence. It's pretty much the same thing, except the American one comes in this massive box that has way too much empty space in it, but that's a completely different story. So as you can see, the point of Masterpiece in vehicle mode is to present an accurate version of the real-world vehicle of a Transformer character while still presenting enough of the original detailing of the, both the show model as well as the toy in order to get the character across. And so it's a fine balancing point, but what it leaves us with is a far more real-world accurate version of what Prowl would look like with a little less detail, a little less... Uh, deco going on but definitely a more serious look and a much tighter look unlike the mat uh, the, the g1 toy that we looked at at the beginning of the week you can see all the lines here are very tight there's very little in the way of gappage between parts and the panel lining you see is pretty much uh focused around areas that tend to actually have those kind of lines going through all the different sections of the car so the result is definitely a much cleaner appearance than either of the toys I've reviewed for Prowl so far. Yes, I'm quite impressed. So yes, we are left with an accurate version of Japan's police car that they did out of the uh, Datsun Z. Uh, hang on, like I, I got this, I got this, I wrote it down, I wrote it down, I'm good. Datsun 280ZX Turbo, and yes, that's called a Fair Lady Z in Japan. <sighs> Notes. I take them. Okay, so molded in white and black again with plenty of paint giving you a very glossy look. A little bit of scratch on mine, but eh, that won't happen on yours, I assume. But it does look quite good. The lines are very clean and crisp and everything looks quite exceptional. You got the taillights painted on in both the orange and the red single exhaust pipe. They're molded to the back. You get little details with Masterpiece like the windshield on the back as well as clear windows here which you remember uh the last time we looked at one painted there but the windshields up front and along the sides those are also uh clear plastic a little bit smoky so a little bit more real again only part that's painted is this particular piece a little bit strange but hey can't everything a little bit of black there on the roof an autobot sigil as well as a tiny little what i assume is a nissan symbol or the Fairly easy, so it's very tiny. It's a big Z, though, so that's something. As well as the, uh, you see the inserts for the headlights. Again, going for a more realistic look. You can see turn signals there, painted up in the orange, and some silver on the rims of the wheels. All looking good. Now, as far as actual police signature items, you have the, uh, light bar up top and you can see the lights inside like they don't actually light of course but the molding is there so that's extremely extremely nice detailing i love that uh, on the side highway patrol police with a big tampograph as well as that blue and yellow sigil that we saw on the g1 toy we look on this side mine's a little bit misprinted i don't know how common that is but it's a little bit distracting but for that matter, not too bad. Detailing is exceptional on this guy. You've got all these little grooves and all these little things to be accurate to the actual vehicle. You got door handles, little nub for the antenna on back, windshield wipers, grills, the whole nine yards, even some uh, rear view mirrors, which is a little bit softer than the most. So you might be a little bit careful with these, but mm, they seem pretty sturdy on mine. Seems like they could take a hit. So yeah, all around, very solid figure. And he rolls, because of course he does. Now, you remember I was looking for some place to plug his his uh, weapon in vehicle mode? Well, the Masterpiece actually provides with a little slot in the back of the light bar, which I can actually attach his weapon like so. 
And of course it looks silly, but hey, if you need to shoot some Decepticons on the go, that's the way it's done. So that is pretty much the vehicle mode all the way around. We can get this guy into robot mode now, and we're going to start by getting the arms out from underneath uh, the main front end of the vehicle. It all swings down at that point. Just like the G1 toy, the arms kind of lock together into this one solid block for transformation. But unlike the G1, it's a little bit more consistent here. It's a little, it's a little bit more, uh, uh, it makes a little bit more sense. Let's put it that way. So, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and take these pieces down, which a little bit tight, a little bit tight. This is kind of scary, I'm going to admit. But... We need to get those out of the way so we can get everything else uh, correctly assembled here. Now, the rear section all comes after, but I want to go ahead and get the doors out here. I'm going to go ahead and make the torso get all the upper body transformed before we go too much farther. It wants you to transform the head relatively early on this, which is always kind of a, a disappointing thing because... You expect like some big epic head reveal or something like you expect it to come at the end of this but no we're pretty much ready for it right now so I'll go ahead and put out like so and it's in place now masterpiece toys always have some kind of trick to transformations that uh, that's uh kind of sets their engineering apart a little bit and this is kind of the thing prowl does where in order to uh, lock the head into place, as well as get these pieces out of the way, you kind of tuck them into these little grooves underneath the head's little plate that holds it. And that not only narrows the profile of the chest, making it more accurate, it also gets these more delicate parts out of the way. It's actually a pretty neat piece of engineering. I quite like it. I can bring these down most of the way so we can still... Uh, get the arms rotated up without the doors getting uh, getting in the way of that. Mm, all the way up. Belly panel is going to fold forward and there. We need to make sure it finds its little slot it plugs into. It's tight connection. There we go. Nice and solid. And from there we can go ahead and straighten up the arms and that will pretty much give us our upper body and you can fold that down and then these two little tabs go right in to those little slots and that brings us to the bottom where I'm going to open up the legs and from here I need to slide out these chunks of plastic which will open up a lot of the components of the legs give us a little bit of room to work this is again where the transformation gets a little bit involved and the nice thing about Masterpiece toys is even if you don't transform them enough, there's like, you know, there, there's like a, there's a majesty. There, there's like a perfection to uh, how these things are engineered. So it's actually very intuitive to figure out how things work on the figure. If you've done it once, it's kind of like riding a bicycle. You kind of get the feel for it. So I just kind of like... Just kind of breezed through that without really explaining what was going on. So, this piece here has to come out a little bit awkwardly. Once you get it separated out, once you get that leg opened up, you can kind of... Oh, come on. I just got it done on one side. You're going to give me trouble on the other side? Yeah, you are. <clears throat> Unpeg it from the side. And from there, you know, pull this side out. A little bit of hinge there. That gives us the freedom and the room we need to fold the thigh out from the lower leg. From there, we'll use those hinges to align the feet like so. There's a little tab that comes up to fill the gap. So we can go ahead and make that a little bit more apparent on the other side now that I think of it. There we go. From there, we simply clean up. Fold those pieces up. Fold these windshield pieces down like so rotate the waist around and that's pretty much going to do it I will go ahead and rotate these up give me a little bit more character to the door wings and just like that see it's such a smooth little piece 
finish it off by giving him some heal spurs. Just like that, we have our Prowl in his robot mode. And definitely the most Prowl looking of the Prowls that we have seen in this week of Prowls. This was always Masterpiece's thing. Not only to make it much more accurate to the show. Its first goal is to make it look like how you remember it looking on the cartoon. But it also carries over some of the details you would expect from the actual toy. So if you're a fan of that one, you still have that. And you're also looking for uh, a little bit more detail than they originally had. Some of the groove lines from the original toy, as well as some of the lines from the animation, and then some of their own. So you have this nice blend of classic, modern, toy, cartoon. It's all pretty much represented all at the same time. Taking a look at the head, it is definitely the G1 Prowl. Big head fins painted all the way around, bright, vibrant red. Blue eyes painted on, and a very stern silver face. This is everyone's... Uh, Favorite? I'm going to go with Faye right here. Law enforcement officer on the Autobot team. Well, he's a Hall of Famer, so I guess favorite has to be. And looking quite cool. It's excellently sculpted. Very, very nice. The overall robot mode, the poor uh, proportions, as you would expect from Masterpiece, are excellent. There's a lot of little tricks and things that were done during that transformation to really get it across just how this guy should actually look. And it's done quite expertly. It's very nicely proportioned all the way around. Definitely harkens back to the animation model. There's a few things that uh, are missing, I will admit. Uh, for instance, on the cartoon, I remember these doors having a little bit of a spike going up. But everything else, pretty much where you'd expect it to be. Uh, the wheels are actually present in the animation model. The groove lines here, the deep ones on the legs are inspired by the animation. As well as the paint for the midsection, red, white, and all that. So everything is done pretty much as I would want. And it does look exceptionally good. I like the, all the inner detailing too. You can see uh, through the clear window, you can see a bunch of mechanical detailing. That robot hidden underneath the glass. Very nice. A lot of little sculpting, especially around the underbelly that you don't normally see. But yeah, there's a lot of little lines here, but it still maintains that nice, smooth, and somewhat blocky G1 aesthetic. And you can see a very clean one at that. He really doesn't have as much junk going on, even compared to the original G1 Prowl. Very, very nice all the way around. There's just so much you can say about it, but they're all coming out to... This was done really well, so it gets a little bit repetitive. Um, let's see, is there anything else I can really point out? I don't think so. Like, that's pretty much what you get. It's a masterful job of recreating Prowl's look and balancing all the different forms of him. I'm going to go ahead and show you the articulation then. The head is on a hinge, so not only can it look up, you can see they even molded some extra neck in there so it looks natural, you can also rotate all the way around. So it's like a ball joint, but a lot more secure and, and quite a bit more stable in the engineering. Uh, shoulders, lots of range of motion here. You've got a ball joint there inside the torso, as well as a universal style joint, or a, actually an extra hinge. So between the three, between all the little points there, you do get a universal range, which is also very good all the way around bicep rotation as well as a double jointed elbow 180 degree of bend love that you also get what i believe is a wrist rotation that's quite tight okay that works all well as well as opening hands we will need those later down to the waist section we have a full rotation on the waist always nice to see panels on the sides can flip up to allow full range of rotation in the universal joints of the hips moving in all directions and being rather un, uh, unhindered, except in some very strange positions you're probably not going to need on your prowl. Thigh swivel, which is done really interestingly. As you can see, the inner thigh does not move along with the outer thigh. It's like a little shell that goes around. It's quite neat. Plenty of range in the knee. Again, 
transformation does allow quite a knee bend. You kind of have to break a little bit transformation. If you just want to stick the outer knee, it's 90 degree, but it's there if you need it. And then, of course, the ankle, which has lots of little hinges in there. So you can rock it forward and back. You can rock it to the side a little bit. And, of course, you do have the heel at the same time for added balance. Exceptional job. Of course, it's a masterpiece. You would fully expect the articulation to be outstanding, and here it absolutely is. You can do pretty much any pose you would see in the cartoon, which is exactly what I want. So what about firepower? Well, let's see. The obvious thing is to bring back that vehicle mode's gun, which is actually, of course, his robot gun. Uh, it does match the original G1 Toys and, uh, sculpting. All the details are there, and then they went and did a few more. For instance, the tip of the barrel has an actual hole in it, so it looks like the tip of a gun barrel. That's nice. It's a small detail. I'm going to go ahead and flip that clip up to reveal the handle of the gun. And that we can go ahead and place directly into Prowl's hand. Now there are slots on the sides of the handle that you kind of have to wedge in, kind of at a diagonal, into the groove in his hand, and then close it shut. This allows him to get a firm grip on the weapon without it slipping out or uh, without it uh, looking incorrect in any way. This way it's always going to point forward from his hand. That's good. It also prevents him from having to have like a big 5 millimeter peg through a solid hole in his hand. That keeps that makes sure you get that extra bit of finger articulation and just a little bit more detail. I like it. And now we also have one other feature. If we open this chest back up, chest, it's his back, we can flip out these, which would be uh, kind of like his shoulder guns on the G1 toy. Now we flip them out and we can extend them. They don't extend too far, just enough to show you where the barrel is in comparison to the rest of the actual shoulder gun. Just enough to get the actual blast radius past his head. Now, here's the thing. Um, they are not based on his... Obviously, they're not based on the ones his toy came with. They're actually blue streaks from the cartoon. And you can justify this little appearance because for one scene, one shot in the, UG, in the G1 cartoon, the very first episode, Prowl did have these shoulder cannons. Uh, that's because they accidentally colored Blue Streak into Prowl. Whoops! But hey, at least there's some justification. You can do it if you want to. Uh, if you want something that looks more accurate to the toy, well, you've got to go... Yeah, well, you had to go through Amazon Japan to get them. And even then, you only had... Uh, you only got one. You needed to get both of the, of the Season 1 Datsuns in order to get two. Ah, uh, well... It's one of those things that drives toy collectors nuts. But, hey, that's what toy collecting is all about. So there, my friends, is Masterpiece Prowl. And as stated, he is an absolute masterpiece. This is just about everything I would want out of a G1-style Prowl. With maybe the exception being I wish the G1 toys shoulder launchers were actually included. Other than that... The detailing is amazing. Uh, both modes look exactly how they should be looking. And the articulation level is phenomenal. And then you have just one of the better transformations. Masterpiece cars tend to have some of the best, most intuitive transformations in Transformers. And there's always these little tricks that make you go, Oh, that's why this toy costs a little bit more money than I would expect. So... So, uh, if you're looking into them, uh, buy with confidence. This thing is absolutely fantastic, and definitely one of my favorites. It's one of the only masterpieces I own more than one version of, because, hey, there's a lot of these guys, just like they're Seekers. I never really came up with a name for, like, the Autobot version of these three, because they are kind of like Seekers, but they're not Seekers, but I'm going to... I'm going to be awake at night thinking about this now. Oh, great.